Hi everyone, Wonia Thibault here, and today is October 28th, 2019, and I'm speaking to you from Northern California. Saturday afternoon, I was speaking at an Audubon Society event, and one of the topics that we were addressing was climate change and how it's affecting bird populations. And right from that event, I went north to visit friends where I used to live in Sonoma County, California, right into an evacuation zone where they were evacuating people due to the high winds and the massive raging fire. And I got evacuated in the middle of the night and had a long, long drive through clogged highways and lots of rerouting because of various fires all over. We are living in pretty wild times and all over California, there have been power outages lasting for days and days. It felt important to put together some videos just offering some help from my insights from having lived long-term off-grid and being able to apply some of those wilderness living skills to the times we're living in right now where we can no longer rely on power being there for us consistently, no longer rely on the cool temperatures coming when we think they will, or the rains coming when we think they will, nor the warming temperatures coming, right? Everything is getting increasingly unpredictable with our changing climate during these times. So I wanna to put together a series of videos just offering help for troubled times and some strategies to be a little bit more grounded, be able to see to our own needs when those things that we have learned to rely upon might not be dependable anymore. So I'm here visiting my mother right now and the power has been turned off for going on 24 hours now and it might come back on again for a moment today and then be back off again for a lot of the week. So I wanted to talk about strategies for how to arrange your refrigerator given this kind of thing. So in terms of long-term thinking, if this is going to be a regular thing, which it may well be going on into the future, people, thinking about the most efficient styles of refrigerators in your house is really helpful. So one thing that a lot of folks don't realize is that it's very inefficient to have a refrigerator and freezer with a side opening door like this because your refrigerator is working hard to fill this space with cool air. Cool air sinks, right? So as soon as you open the door, you get all of that cold air falling out of your refrigerator and then it needs to be cooled down again. So this is part of why chest freezers are much more efficient than upright freezers. Now you may or may not have that choice, of course, if you already have your refrigerator and you're not up for getting a new one, but something to think about when the power is out is not just leaving things in your refrigerator and banking on them staying cold long-term, because as soon as you open this door a few times, you've lost lost most of your cold. So it's actually a better strategy to take that stuff out of your refrigerator, especially if you know the power outage is coming, and load it into a cooler because that is going to be a chest style opening and that cold air is going to stay in there. So also, Everything that's in your refrigerator is going to be cold starting out. So you can think of those as cold batteries storing that cold. And as soon as you take them out and leave them sitting on a counter or leave them out somewhere where they're gonna warm up, you've lost that cold storage. So trying to keep the things in the refrigerator, just pull out one of what you need instead of pulling out the whole item. Taking out the most perishable items and putting those in a cooler. If you have ice, great. But if not, again, they're full of cold when you first take them out. So they're gonna keep the cold for a while in a cooler. Another thing to think about is, of course, cold sinks and heat rises. So in order to keep your stuff cool as long as possible, don't put it on the countertop, don't put it in shelves, put it on the ground. Put it somewhere where it's cold because if you're not heating your home particularly, the closer you are to the ground of your home, the more cold it is. Also, if you live somewhere where you have outdoor access, now this isn't necessarily going to be true for people in apartments or multi-story buildings, but if you live on the ground floor or if you have yard space, the earth is a huge thermal battery, right? So the earth itself has a very stable mass and it tends to stay very cool. So taking your things 
out of the house and putting them on the cold ground and then covering them in something insulative if you have you know sleeping bags or blankets or what have you so that you can actually keep them close to the earth and keep that warmth from getting into them from the outside air that's going to do a lot for keeping your food cold another thing to think about is storing your food on the north side of your house right we we tend to put windows facing south and passive solar houses are all oriented south because that's the direction that the sun is moving that's where we get the most radiation so keeping things to the north is going to make a big difference for keeping things cold think about what is the north side of your house and move your items that you want to stay cold to that area that's going to make a huge difference another thing that's really helpful is evaporative cooling Evaporative cooling is basically what swamp coolers operate on, where you have a lot of surface area that gets wet and then you have a fan blowing through those wet layers and that's going to really, really cool the air. So you can do that on a small scale, just using damp cloth and somewhere with airflow. So if you're somewhere with some amount of wind, then that's going to be naturally cooling your things. It doesn't work very well in a humid environment. So this is a porch on the northeast side of my mother's house. So it's in the shade right now. It was in the sun a bit this morning. And we've got a series of coolers here that we've taken the most perishable goods from the refrigerator out and put them in here with ice from the freezer. So, and then these are covered with damp towels. And if you're in a situation where you have a well and you're reliant on a pump for water or on electricity for water, then obviously you wanna be really sparing with water and you don't wanna necessarily use what water you have in order to keep your things cold. But you can really get creative. You can, you can use your dishwater your dirty dishwater that's already been used. When you take a bath or wash your hands, plugging the sink, saving that water, and then using that to dampen your towels so that you're not wasting any water that you could be drinking. So damp towels, and then this also has a little insulative cover on top of it made of reflective foam, kind of bubble wrap type thing, and then the cooler inside that. So this isn't an airtight cooler, it is one that that can lose cold air through its seal. So these two things are gonna make a huge difference in terms of keeping this really cold for the long term. And as you can see, there's still a lot of ice in here. So there's one particular strategy for keeping food cold via evaporative cooling that's used often in countries that don't have reliable power that are really hot and dry. And it's called a zir. And I don't have an example of one now, but I would love to post a video showing the construction of a zir at some point. But it is using your basic flower pots, your nice unglazed clay flower pots. And it is a way of nestling two pots into one another filling the space between them with sand and then dripping water into that space between them and allowing the pots, which are porous because they're unglazed, to evaporate out that water. And it's gonna be creating cool environments in the inside flower pot. So it's called a zir, more on that coming eventually, but it's another strategy for keeping your food cold without refrigeration and without ice. All you need is a climate that's gonna be a little drier than high, high humidity so that it's gonna be able to evaporate and simple things that people sometimes have lying around in their garage or their garden shed and sand or you can even use soil. So that's another fabulous strategy.